I, I don't know if it was, I don't think it's actually technically legal, but I didn't know it at the time. I did have a sea turtle stew. I don't think you're supposed to hunt and eat sea, tur eat sea turtle, but um, it was a member that, that made it for us, or a, a family in, in Fiji that made it for us. And I enjoyed it, my companion nearly threw up, so. Um, one of the, okay, a really crazy experience, let's make this super short form. We had a, a crazy lady appear at our flat in the middle of the night about 3 a.m. and she was tapping at our window and saying, get out of my house. This is a, not a blessing, this is a curse upon this house and kind of saying weird stuff and she started spinning around in circles and was just kind of going crazy. And then finally, we just kind of laid there still hoping she'd go away, pretending we were not awake. And then she finally left and we got up and we looked outside and we went and looked down off of our, our little porch balcony thing there down on the driveway and she was looking back up at us. We were just like, so I tried talking to her in English and she didn't say anything so I tried in Fijian. I was like, can we help you? And she was like, this is my house. You, you, you guys are evil and you killed my family and they're buried down here and, and I, I, I'm an assassin from the CIA and I, if you need to get out of this house or else. And, and eventually, I don't remember what we said, but she eventually turned and walked away. And that was a weird, strange night. One of my favorite experiences was uh, a, a mother, a single mother with some children that we found and we were teaching. And the change that she had, at first she was kind of opposed to us because we, we mentioned that you know God and Jesus are two separate beings and she was opposed to that, and believed in the Trinity. But as we taught her, she was really touched by the Spirit and she was able to make a lot of changes in her life. And right before she got baptized with her two sons that were old enough, um, she just opened up one evening it, telling us all about how she went through a really dark, low phase where she was contemplating suicide and taking your children's life with her own. And just how grateful she was for this light that we had brought and that had helped change her life. And I, I remember in particular the day of her baptism was the day I was supposed to leave that area. But I lucked out and managed to be able to get the baptism in right before I left. And we had to drive this truck with all the members down to the riverside to do the baptism. And then on the drive back, you know, her and her sons were just sitting there drenched and dripping and kind of chilly from being all wet. But I remember her just the smile she had on her face and her hugging and kissing her children. And it was just one of the most beautiful, peaceful sights I'd ever seen. She felt clean and you could see it. I, I was so afraid of speaking that I didn't speak enough to make too many mistakes. But there was one mistake that was pretty funny later on, actually, when I was more comfortable with the language. But I meant to say, um, you know, we can receive a remission of our sins. But instead I said... Which means we can receive an adultery of our sins. So instead of remission of sins, I said adultery of sins. And that was, that was pretty funny. <laughs> I'd say that the turning point of my mission where I went from just like struggling to survive to thriving and just enjoying every moment of it was when it, it was like quite a sudden revelatory moment where I was just struggling and hating life and I just had this moment of of revelation that these this thought that came to my head of like you know what what are you complaining about the Lord trusts you with this task he's given you so don't throw that in his face and don't trust yourself like you, you can do this he trusts you with it and you're gonna learn from it and I went and I kneeled down and I prayed and I said, I'm sorry, Lord, for my attitude, and I am grateful that I'm here and that I have this chance to grow. And I just, from that moment on, learned to just be grateful for every trial that came. And it helped me to just laugh when, when the rain started pouring and we got drenched. I just learned to laugh and have fun with it. Or when the truck broke down and we lost an entire day of work, I just kind of was like, well, 
might as well not get waste my time getting upset about it and to just learn to be grateful for every trial and to enjoy the comedy in difficult moments. I learned how to drive a stick shift with the other hand. I could drive it before, but on the other side of the road with the other hand, uh, that's about the only creative thing I can think of. <laughs> Cool. Cook, I learned to cook a couple Fijian meals. I was in Fiji during the tropical cyclone Evan, I believe, that it came and it just kind of hooked and went right around the side of the island. And um, I wasn't in the worst part of the island, but it had some pretty darn heavy winds that tore up a couple of trees in the yard and. Our mission president told us stay inside. We didn't. We lost our P day that week. Sad that it had to be on a P day, but um, so that was pretty exciting. Lots of rain, lots of wind, and a couple torn up trees. And for service, we helped clean up. It would be during that time when I had that kind of revelatory moment that brought about that turning point in my mission. It was when I was sent to my second area where I was so afraid to speak the language before and I got sent to a Fijian branch with a Fijian companion who at the time didn't know too much English and I struggled so hard just to keep my spirits up because we'd go to lessons and he would teach and I'd have no idea what he was saying and I just even struggled to keep up with him on the bicycle because he was such a fit, fit athletic guy and I just... It, it was miserable and I just didn't feel like I was learning anything or doing any good whatsoever. And I, it, it hit me with pretty severe depression at a couple points. Um, but from that, that turning point where I had that moment, I never had a bad day again. Hard days, yeah, but never a bad day. Be excited for an adventure. It'll be an adventure. You'll never know. You, you just no way of really knowing what areas you're going to go to and what experience you'll have. Just be excited for an adventure. Sometimes scary situations you won't like as much, but just get yourself pumped up and excited and just have fun with it regardless of what happens. Keep yourself busy with church activities. Make church activities priority over homework over school over anything if it is a formally organized church activity such as church itself family evening or a, um, a ward prayer type of thing wherever you are go to that just dedicate yourself to all those activities regardless of how exciting they may seem because you know like on your mission it's spelled out for you where the lord wants you to be every second of every day at home it's not as clear but i promise that Church activities is where the Lord wants you to be, and so you can at least have that confidence and that assurity with those events.